I think, I think the characterization I would use on Qatar is it is a country that has, um, from which financiers have helped finance Al Qaeda, ISIS, the Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas, uh, and other similar organizations, including the Taliban. And I don't understand why. I can't, for the life of me, figure out why Qatar wants to give a platform to the Taliban. And uh, the ambassador from Afghanistan has talked to me about this. I mean, they allowed them to put a new name on it. Uh, I forget, it's uh, Emirate of Afghanistan or something like that. Um, but why would you host a terrorist organization like the Taliban that is using, using the ki those kinds of tactics against the, the civilian population as well as military uh, in Afghanistan to overthrow a government? Why would, you, why would you give them a platform? Why would you host their so-called leaders on, uh, on El Jazeera? Why, why would you do that? Um, now, I know that the argument is being made that Qatar will be, you know, part of helping finance our new anti-terror center and so forth in the Middle East. And I think that's good. I think it's, there's always the possibility that you can change behavior. But I would say when the behavior is so wrong on so many different issues, uh, if there is, if there's going to be a change, it needs to be immediate. There needs to be a course correction here, because the consequence is the loss of human life across Central Asia, uh, in the Middle East, and beyond. Uh, these clearly, for Hamas to uh, continue its operations, to have a lifeline, to cut her, it makes no sense to think that this in any remote way could be part of the solution. To be able to uh, harbor the worst of the worst among the Hamas leadership. The most intransigent, the, the most vicious. Why do that? So uh, I think there's going to be a great deal of pressure on Qatar to change its behavior.